now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way.
What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and it's new release Saturday. And today we were originally going to take a look at The Last Weekend, A Love Story, the story of John Lennon and May Payne's relationship in the mid 70s. Unfortunately, the closest theater to me that is showing it is like 50 miles away. So it just wasn't very beneficial for me, financially sound, for me to pay the gas to travel to go see it, unfortunately. So instead, it is being replaced by the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Once and Always, the Netflix original 30th anniversary special starring Walter Jones. David Yost, Charlie Kirsch, Catherine Sutherland, Steve Cardenas, Johnny Young Bosch, Karen Ashley, Barbara Goodson, Austin St. John, Amy Jo Johnson, Jason David Frank, and Thuy Trang. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the introduction, it's new release Saturday. And we were supposed to do the last weekend. It just wasn't financially beneficial for me with the 50-mile drive there, 50-mile drive home, cost of gas, cost of movie. Unfortunately, if I can find it at Redbox or on a streaming service here in the very near future, I will do it. But I had to do something to fill in the space here. And when I discovered that Netflix was doing a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 30th anniversary special entitled Once and Always. I figured that was perfect. I've been a Power Rangers fan since the 90s, although I didn't always start out that way, and we'll get more into that later on. But let's get into the synopsis of our special, and it's a lengthy one. I've probably got some of the most notes I've ever had for a movie, six pages worth. And this was just a 55-minute special. That's how intently I focused, took notes, and then with the wiki page that I used to help fill in a few gaps. That's it's a lot of stuff here. Let's get into it. Now, our movie opens in the year 2022 as Billy Cranston is attacked by a robotic version of Arch Nemesis, Rita Repulsa and a gang of putty patrollers. Rita asks Billy if he has any last words, and he says it's morphing time, allowing himself to transform into the Blue Ranger. He begins to fight off the putties when the black, pink, yellow, red, and green rangers all teleport in for assistance. During the battle, Billy is knocked to the edge of a cliff, where Robo Rita attempts to finish him off with a lethal blast from her magic wand. Trini Kwan, the Yellow Ranger, jumps in front of the blast and is killed, while Robo Rita retreats to the Dark Dimension. The Black Ranger removes his helmet to reveal Zack Taylor, the original Black Ranger. The Pink, Red, and Green Rangers. Kimberly Hart, Jason Lee Scott, and Tommy Oliver, respectively, all remain helmeted as they grieve the loss of Trini. Back at the Quan residence, Zack and Billy now have the daunting task of telling Min Quan, Trini's daughter, the news. They begin to argue about how and when to give Min the news, but she walks in on the conversation and immediately runs off. Billy then tells Zack that they need to tell her everything, including the fact that her mom was a Power Ranger. One year later, Zack has become Min's legal guardian and moved into the Quan residence. They go to the cemetery to visit Trini's grave, only to walk into an ambush by Robo Rita and two of her monsters, Snizzard and Minotaur. Now we hear... Billy, Kimberly, Jason, and Tommy morph into action. And Zack 
morphs into action to join them. Snizzard captures Tommy, Jason, and Kimberly and imprisons them in a machine that slowly drains them of their energy. Knowing that they are outmatched, Zack and Billy power down and retreat with men. Back home, Min volunteers to join Zack and Billy as she wants to get revenge on Robo Rita. Zack and Billy ask her not to get involved as they don't want to lose her like they lost her mom. This causes Min to lash out at Billy, blaming him for her mom's death. Zack and Billy then head to a command center that is hidden under Billy's Cranston Tech headquarters. It is revealed that Billy's attempt to revive the deceased Zordon is what accidentally created Robo Rita. We learn that the evil particles that were purged from the original Rita Repulsa from Zordon's Z Wave took over the body of Alpha 8. Alpha's successor, Alpha 9, then initiates the Bandora Protocol, which summons all of the Ranger teams throughout the universe. The call is answered by Rocky DeSantos and Cat Hillard, the second Red and Pink Rangers, respectively. Meanwhile, Min sees the attacks occurring in Angel Grove on her phone, and she runs inside her house. Driven by her desire for revenge, she unlocks a jewelry box which holds her mom's power morpher, grabs it, and heads out. Cat and Rocky are then given proxy power coins so that they can once again morph into Power Rangers. However, Minotaur has been tracking Rangers all over the universe. Minotaur and Snizzard then use putties to lure rangers out so that Snizzard can capture them and place them into the same machine that currently holds Jason, Tommy, and Kimberly. Alpha realizes this, and he tells the rangers, allowing them to demorph and temporarily fall back. Back at the command center, the rangers receive a message from Adam Park and Aisha Campbell, the second Black and Yellow Rangers, respectively. They tell the Rangers that they are on the way, but that they are six hours away from teleportation range. The Rangers then discover that the old juice bar is under attack, and Min is there. Now, Min is able to hold her own briefly, but when she attempts to use her mom's morpher to morph, she fails and becomes overpowered by the putties. Zack and Rocky teleport to the juice bar, defeat the putties, retrieve Min, and bring her back to the command center. Zack takes Trini's morpher away from Min and then scolds her for attempting to seek revenge instead of justice. After a heart-to-heart conversation between Zack and Min, where he tells her, about how being a ranger is about being selfless, about Zordon, and about what Billy was attempting when Robo Rita arrived and killed her mom, Min finally calms down and begins to feel a little bit guilty about how she has treated Billy. At a junkyard, Billy, Rocky, and Cat all morph in order to lure out Snizzard and Minotaur and then trap them on an electromagnet. The rangers then use a cloaking device that Billy developed in order to make them invisible so that they can infiltrate Rita's moon palace by using a spaceship that was provided by SPA agents Adam and Aisha. However, after the rangers leave, Min grabs a spare cloaking device and Trini's morpher before escaping the command center. Min then proceeds to commandeer the Radbug, Billy's flying car, and takes off towards the junkyard where she is abducted by Robo Rita. Inside of Rita's palace, 
the Rangers find her machine and notice that she has already captured members of multiple Power Ranger teams. While Billy discovers that Rita has been created a time portal, Rita and her monsters then return to the palace with men in tow, and she reveals her plan to travel back to the past and kill Zack, Kimberly, Billy, Trini, and Jason before they can even be recruited by Zordon. Rita attempts one more time to kill Billy with her magic wand, but Min breaks free and takes the shot instead, getting hit right in Trini's morpher. As a result, she begins to see images of her mom as a ranger flashing before her eyes as the morpher begins to glow. Min miraculously survives and is finally given the power of the Yellow Ranger. Min then says it's morphin' time and leads Zack, Cat, Billy, and Rocky in morphine, becoming the Yellow Ranger for the very first time. The Rangers get surrounded by putties and they proceed to fight them off with their power weapons. The Power Axe, Power Bow, Power Lance, Power Daggers, and Power Sword. They destroy the putties, so Rita makes Snizzard grow. Billy has Alpha teleport the Zords to the moon, where they form the Megazord. Billy and Min then take the Megazord into battle against Snizzard, while the remaining Rangers defeat Minotaur in the palace. Afterwards, the rangers join Billy and Min inside the Megazord while a wounded Rita attempts to use the portal. The rangers destroy Snizzard, which in turn destroys the machine and releases the captive rangers. So the rangers immediately teleport back to Rita's palace to finish off Robo Rita. Back on Earth, Adam and Aisha load the freed rangers onto their spaceship and set course for Aquator where they can heal up before returning back home. Before Adam and Aisha can depart, Aisha tells Min that she's glad that the legacy of the saber-toothed tiger is in good hands. We then go back to the Angel Grove Youth Center, where Billy and Zack reminisce with Min about their adventures and the times that they spent at the Youth Center. Min apologizes to Billy for how she treated him, and then he proceeds to ground her for stealing the Radmobile. We then end with an old clip of Kimberly singing to Zack, Billy, Trini, Jason, and Tommy as we fade to black and get a dedication graphic to both Tweed Trang and Jason David Frank. Once a ranger, always a ranger. And our movie comes to its close. So this was a heartwarming bit of fan service, in my personal opinion. Um, let me get this out of the way first and foremost. I've been a Ranger fan since probably about 94. And I know the Rangers started in 93. Like I said, I was a little bit late getting on the bandwagon. I'm old enough that I was around in the 80s for the Voltron cartoons. So when I heard about the Power Rangers, I was automatically put off by it because I was such a fan of Voltron. You know, you figure five kids with robots that come together to form one giant robot. It's basically similar premises here. Granted, one was a cartoon, one was live action, but it it just kind of ruffled my feathers the wrong way. Then I saw the Green with Evil arc, and I was hooked. I was hooked. Went back, started rewatching the older episodes. You know, there were only like 20, 25 episodes prior to the Green Ranger arc. So went back, rewatched those. And while I didn't hate them, 
they definitely weren't as good as the Green Ranger arc and everything that came behind that, in my personal opinion. So, I really connected with the character of Tommy. Huge fan of Jason David Frank. This special, though, was going to be touchy for a lot of reasons. First of all, everyone knew Jason David Frank had just passed away November of last year. So whether it was in production prior to his passing or afterwards, there was noticeably going to be an absence there because Jason David Frank said he didn't want to do it. Personally, I feel like I felt like he was kind of trolling us at first and I felt like he was going to pop up anyways because Jason David Frank has long been associated with the Ranger franchise figure, the green Ranger, the white Ranger, the red Zeo Ranger, the red turbo Ranger and the black dino Ranger. He's been five different Rangers and then he's constantly popped up in cameos throughout multiple series i i figured he was trolling us and that's part of what makes me wonder if some of this wasn't filmed after his passing because of the fact that he wasn't there after all i understand he wanted to focus on the legend of the white dragon but i feel like he could have focused on that and still made an appearance in this, even if it was just at the end. Twe Train, completely different story. She passed away in like 2001, 2002. There was no way that she was going to be involved in this, but they included her anyway. They used archive audio recordings of her and Jason David Frank in order to make it feel like The original yellow and green rangers were there. And then they did the same thing with Austin St. John and Amy Jo Johnson, the red and pink rangers, respectively. Austin St. John can't travel because of legal issues. You know, he, he had some legal issues come up last year. And aside from conventions, he's not allowed to travel. So... While I do feel that there's other things that they could have done to have him physically there, I I understand using the archive voice footage for him as well. Kimberly, Amy Jo Johnson, that's where it really gets touchy. You know, you, you hear all these stories and all these rumors abound about her, and was she holding out for more money? Did she want to direct? Did she want to have a production credit? Was she mad that the fact that Kimberly was once again the damsel in distress and one of the captured rangers? Did they do that because she didn't want to be in the special? You know, there's... Is it possible that they did film a lot of this after the passing of Jason David Frank? And she didn't want to be involved without him there. Maybe Amy Jo Johnson felt it would be too difficult for her to be there without him there. You know, even though Tommy married Kat in the continuity of the show, there was always that connection between Tommy and Kimberly. You know, you even think about the Power Rangers reboot movie from 2017, 2018, whatever it was. Amy Jo and Jason David Frank did a scene together as a cameo in that as well. So maybe it was just going to be too hard for her to be on a Ranger set without him. You know, there's a lot of speculation. But I felt like, especially in the case of Twee Train and Jason David Frank, by using archive audio, they did great. I like the fact that Walter Jones and David Yost, Zach and Billy, were pushed to the forefront. 
as a result of all of this. You know, the Black Ranger was always number two in command, or supposed to be. Billy, the Blue Ranger, was always the intellect. So for them to kind of be leading the charge here, especially considering the fact that Rocky and Cat were filling in as the Red and Pink Rangers, the second Red and Pink Rangers via timeline history, it made sense for the two that were originally there to be the leaders. And everyone thinks that the Red Ranger should be the leader. And by history, we're taught that the Red Ranger is the leader. So it should have gone to Rocky by default. But Rocky wasn't there at the start of the story. Rocky was called in along with Cat via Alpha's distress call. So it made sense for the two characters that were there from the beginning to be the leaders of the story for me. I really enjoyed what they did with Min, Trini's daughter, as far as the story goes. I think she looked the part. She looked like she could physically be Trini's daughter. I thought that her attitude was perfectly suited for one of Zordon's teenagers with attitude. And I like how they kind of loosely tied the thread from the reboot movie into her character. And what I mean by that is a lot of people were mad at the reboot movie that it took so long for them to morph. That wasn't an issue for me because long-term storytelling. They had to earn the right, the ability. So did Min. Min thought she could just pick up her mom's morpher, morph into action, bam, I'm a Power Ranger. You know, just like they did in Day of the Dumpster. You know, freaking 25-minute TV episode, and within the first seven minutes, they're morphing into action. No real backstory, no reasons for these characters, aside from the fact that they're friends that all just happen to be wearing the colors of the respective Rangers. Like, there's nothing there to warrant why these kids should be given that ability. Whereas in the reboot movie, they had to earn it. Men had to earn it. Min's character for me was very much similar to Chris O'Donnell's Robin in Batman Forever. You think about how Robin watched Two-Face kill his parents and he was out for revenge. And he was just so consumed by this hatred for Two-Face that he would stop at nothing to kill him just like he did his parents. And it wasn't until he calmed down that he took a step back, that he realized there was more than revenge. And that's when Bruce, Batman, allowed him to team up with him, when he knew he wasn't going to be a liability anymore. Min had her mom die. She wanted revenge on Robo Rita for, for killing her mother. To a lesser extent, she wanted revenge on Billy for allowing it to happen. But it took her having that heart-to-heart with Zack, realizing what Billy was trying to do, realizing that being a ranger is all about being selfless, not selfish. And it took Min sacrificing herself, much like her mom did, for Billy, for her to get zapped in the morpher, survive, and given the power of the Yellow Ranger. I think that the way they tied all of these things together for the grander story was really awesome. I've heard a lot of people run this special down. I don't know what they thought they were expecting. You know, were they expecting Marvel's The Avengers? Because this was the 30th anniversary special of a 90s kids show from Fox. 
This wasn't going to be Marvel's The Avengers. This wasn't even going to be DC's Justice League. This is different. This is a little bit more campy. It, it would be like if there was a anniversary 1966 Batman episode, which there kind of was back in the day. There was a movie called Return to the Batcave which was kind of a, a TV movie about how Batman was made, but then they tied in some of the, the characters in their more current, older age. But if they did something like that, because that series was campy, it was corny, it was cheesy, just like the Power Rangers was in the 90s. But that's why we loved it. We loved it because it was a live-action cartoon in a time when Saturday morning cartoons was all we really got. We didn't really get a whole lot of stuff like this. This was one of the big jump offs for us. I wasn't a Power Rangers fan for long. I'm not a lifelong, well, I am a lifelong Power Rangers fan, but I, I haven't followed every car incarnation of the series. I stopped when the Rangers on TV got the ninja powers from the first movie because they completely retconned the story of the movie, bringing it onto the TV show. You think about the original movie, there's the character Dulcia who gives them their ninja powers. The TV show, there's this annoying robot named Ninjor. I, I lost it with Ninjor. He he completely killed the series for me. I felt like we had a great origin story for the ninja powers in the movie. If they had just whoosh, brought that onto the TV show, cool. I probably would have stuck watching. But they were like, yeah, that was nice. That was a movie. Here's how we're going to do it for TV now. Huh? No. But the bottom line is, I felt like this special and the fact that we had Zach and Billy as our primaries, we brought Rocky and Cat as our secondaries, we introduced Min as the new Yellow Ranger, and we even had cameos from Adam and Aisha, the second Yellow and Black Rangers, all kind of tied this thing up into a nice little package for lifelong Ranger fans. I don't know if there's going to be a sequel. I wish and I hope that there will be some continuation of Min's story, whether it's a standalone Netflix series, whether it's another special, another movie, a part two, if you will. I'd like to see some of the other Rangers come back a little bit more prominent. I'd like to see more of Adam and Aisha. I would like to see Kimberly actually pop in. You know, I'd like to see Jason pop in once his legal issues are done. You know, I, I watched one of my friends. She has her own podcast, The Rangers of Wrestling. And she mentioned how or her guests, I forget which one of them did it, mentioned how they could have just green screened him. Gone to Texas, Austin St. John's home, since he can't travel. Found some park that they could have basically just like doubled as Angel Grove Park. Shot a couple of scenes with him. Found a soundstage green screen something so they could have dropped him into the command center and they could have used him. The one thing that I think kind of takes away from this for me, and it's the least believable part of this whole Power Rangers story, is the fact that it was Tommy, Jason, and Kimberly that got caught. Now, I understand why they did it. They were the three that couldn't physically participate. 
So it makes sense for, for the story for that purpose. Think about it. All the times watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Kimberly? Okay, I can maybe see that. Tommy and Jason? You're more apt to capture Zack and Billy and have Tommy and Jason try to save the day. That makes more sense from a storyline perspective. Again, I understand why they did what they did because... Jason David Frank passed away. Austin St. John couldn't travel. Amy Jo Johnson didn't want to do it, whatever her reasons are. And we already discussed a few of the possibilities at the start of this. But from a storyline perspective, it just didn't make sense to me. What do you guys think? Lifelong Power Ranger fans, let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Let's have that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction. When it comes to my rating of this, I'm going to give Power Rangers once and always four and a half out of five stars. And I only don't give it the perfect five because of... Austin St. John and Amy Jo Johnson's lack of involvement. Again, I understand the reasons, not disputing those, but at least one of them could have tap danced around it. So their lack of involvement and the fact that, like I just broke down, due to their lack of involvement, that one major point in the story makes no sense. Again, what do you think? Let me know. Leave your thoughts and comments in over here if you're watching live, down here if you're watching on demand. And whatever you do, make sure you guys tune in later on this evening. Right here to the Casa D18 Studios channel, the Jeff Meacham Network, and across the Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media as it's time once again to open the doors to the Saturday night shenanigans that are open mic night myself the west coast professor jeff meacham the simple man noah foster the heat man james hebert will all be in attendance this evening as well as whoever else decides to step through the doors up to the microphone in order to engage us in this week's talk of professional wrestling and then tomorrow right back here on the casa d18 studios channel It'll be time once again to step into the war zone. That's right. It'll be time for another edition of the Weekly Acquisition Report, the show where I, the renegade, show you, the viewers, the latest additions to my ever-growing movie library. You don't want to miss out on any of that content right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, on the Jeff Meacham Network, across the Jeff Meacham Network, Multiverse of Media, Open Mic Night, The War Zone, One more week of movies that star musicians. So much good stuff in store. So make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out anytime a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or anytime we go live. As is the case with Open Mic Night, pay-per-view PLE coverage, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and so much more. Share these videos. With your family, friends, loved ones, coworkers, movie fanatics, cinephiles in your life, fans of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, fans of Saban Enterprises, fans of Walter Jones, David Yost, Amy Jo Johnson, Twee Train, Austin St. John, Jason David Frank, anybody that's ever been affiliated with the Power Rangers franchise, share this video with them. It's the only way we're going to keep my visibility in YouTube's algorithms now that I am a monetized channel. Thank you once again to everyone who joined me, tuned in today. Thank you to everyone who helped to make me a monetized channel. It means so much more to me than you guys will ever know. Let the power protect you, and I will see you guys next time.